we'll move on to mr ashley uh, rebello for his uh, thoughts and for his uh, you know sharing on how his uh, journey has been and what he thinks uh, is lying in store for the future mr ashley over to you sir okay so i come from a very very small town which is just outside uh, another state from my uh, karnataka so it's uh, close to kerala so i do understand and i do uh, love the culture and everything that kerala has to offer um it's been a long journey for me it's been almost 25 years since i've been in this industry and um first of all i'm sorry thank you so much thanks to india for inviting me here. and uh, to be with the esteemed people it gives me great pleasure to be here on this sunday afternoon coming back to where i come from and uh, what i do i'm a costume designer and also a stylist so a lot of uh, students right now get a little confused between the two uh, a stylist is one that works with fabric and with ready made garments and styles people and a costume designer works with films and who styles according to the director according to what the producer is providing him with and according to the story and according to the whole scenario of a entire film um it so happened that 25 years ago i just walked into mansoor khan's office he was a very uh, prolific filmmaker and uh, i just walked in to his office and asked him that i want to uh, do clothes for his film and be a costume designer and he said have you done anything before and i said no um and he just like that told me yes you're doing the film you're on so for me i asked him i said what is the one thing that you know really caught your attention that you know i that you wanted me as your costume designer he said actually when you walked through that door he said the amount of confidence that you had that is something that i really liked to do even though you did not know your skills didn't even though you did not know much about the industry or about costume designing you just had so much of confidence that i felt that this is the right person for me to start my first film so i got my first film just like that but it was a tough journey from there on because um, i thought everybody worked like mansoor khan but nobody did work like mansoor khan so i started scampering around doing lots of things and the first film release and i thought wow uh, you know it's become a big success and people would call me day in and day out uh, to style their films but trust me nobody called me so it then happened that i started doing production and on a production film i just then met ravina tandem um, and it so happened that we started working with each other and i went back to costume design today uh there are different career options in costume designing and styling and in so many you know aspects of fashion um i remember when i wanted to start off and uh, you know actually wanted to go and do a course in nift and i couldn't afford it and of course i didn't get in but in today's day and age nift calls me to give guest lectures so it's ironical uh you never know where your dreams lead you to so i believe that uh, if you have the will and the power uh and like once my mom said start small but think big so if you think that you can make it then there's no need in stopping you and uh, i also believe that um you make what you are so it's up to you to decide who you want to be and what you want to be a lot of people told me that oh it's you know you're just going to be another tailor so i said there's nothing wrong in being a tailor but i design you know so it it's it's uh, it's different from actually tailoring because i design the clothes and then give it to a tailor who then stitches it for me uh the same thing went with even my parents i mean my relatives who kept saying oh your son is just going to be another you know i don't know what he's going to do so he wants to become a fashion designer but what is his career option so i said no that's my career and they would be like 
no, but so you want to be a fashion designer, but what are you going to do? Are you going to work in a bank? Are you going to become a doctor? Are you going to become, you know, what are you going to do? So I said, no, that is my career. And that's what's going to, you know, earn the money for me. And that's what's going, that's something that I'd really like doing. And today, in fact, I have the same people, you know, congratulating me every time they see my name anywhere. And they're like, wow, you know, you made the Rebellos name proud. So um, this is an appeal, especially to parents that, in today's day and age, uh, there are so many career options and let your children choose what's right for them. And I believe that if they choose what's right for them, then they're on the right path of, you know, then rather, you know, doing an engineering or a doctor's job and then, you know, giving up after two years and thus denying somebody who actually wants to become a doctor or an engineer. So I feel that, uh, in today's day and age, we are so with this emerging, uh, you know, global, uh, where everybody is coming together, just in a click of a button, everything is so accessible. And so I feel that, uh, uh, you know, something like this is so creative and so wonderful. You get to create so many different kinds of clothes, you get to create so many different kinds of um, you know, especially in, in uh, costume designing, I feel I can go anywhere that I want to. I can get into a fantasy world. I can get into um, you know, reality. I can get into something that's 80s. I can get go back in time. And that is fantastic because where would I get a career that would take me to all these places and also help me work and learn at the same time? It is a glamorous job. So to say, you do become friends with everybody and, you know, you uh, become best friends because you're in constant contact and in uh, personal touch with, you know, your actors and your directors and all, all, all the who's who. So it is extremely glamorous, but it is really, really, it's really, really hard. I mean, I work 24-7 and it's really, really hard work because... Uh, I don't get to sometimes spend most of my, you know, uh, holidays with my friends. I don't get to spend uh, Christmas with my family mostly. I don't get to spend Diwali with anybody. So I'm working. So, you know, even this Diwali, I am working. Because we're starting a new film. It happens to be on Diwali. So um, I believe that um, parents should just allow their kids to do what they want to. And... It's an opportunity for them that is in the creative field. So thank you so much. And we'll catch up later on the question and answer session. Thank you, Mr. Ashley. Thank you for uh, that very, very inspiring session. In fact, uh, the way you said that, uh, you know, I, even I agree to what your mom said, start small, but think big. Start somewhere. So that is something which was very inspiring, I would say. So the next speaker, I think, uh, I, I in the uh, in the confusion, I left out to introduce Mr. Eldo. Uh, you know, Mr. Eldo has always been a people's person, and uh, uh, he does not need uh, an introduction to the the academic and the training side in this part of the world. But uh, you know, uh, being a beauty uh, bestowed on me, uh, Mr. Eldo Kuruvela uh, is a founder of Vedatma. You can also see Vedatma is also. Uh, a joint organizer of this uh, uh, you know, confluence. He has a BA uh, degree uh, in economics from St. Stephen's College, the LI College in Delhi, and an MBA from Griffith University in Australia, uh, after which he, he worked with Arthur Anderson, which is which is later became Ernst & Young and also Oracle Corporation in Bangalore. And from 2003, he, he has been a coach tonight and uh, he uh, is an entrepreneur uh, working in uh, uh, you know, uh, working with Vedatma, and of course, his interests are as diverse as education to, uh, say, tourism, mining, real estate, and agriculture. He has also been a, uh, you know, uh, you know, guide and helping hand to many people in terms of, uh, you know, uh, helping them to choose a career. He's a certified, uh, you know, psychometric career assessor. Uh, he's also uh, been, uh, you know, part of this mayor's Briggs type uh, indicator assessments, and and he has. Very strong uh, inventory, and uh, I know he has a trained uh, 
set of people working in that uh, you know psychometric test and analysis area in his offices in Bangalore and in Cochin. Uh, and uh, they undertake various uh, you know uh, career counseling uh, sessions for students and um, and I'm sure uh, you know Mr. Mr. Eldo as part of this panel can add value to what other speakers are saying and uh, can talk uh, can be a cherry on the icing as to how uh, you know personality uh, traits uh, can be guided to various uh, career aspirations. So over to Mr. Eldo Kurula, your session, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I think I'm the odd man out, uh, as uh, you were just mentioning. I'm a not, not an artist here. Uh, but yeah, I, I do meet a lot of uh, aspiring artist uh, students who want to be aspiring artists. And uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, inspiring to hear uh, stories from the different people that, uh, you know, we had. Uh, we are speaking. We had uh, Ashley speaking, uh, Hari speaking. Uh, it's very interesting, isn't it? When they talk about how they started, uh, you know, it was very interesting to actually hear the fact that there were two of us sitting here who didn't get admission to NID and NIFT, and there they are, like the leaders in their uh, particular field. So that, that talks a lot about education in art, right? Uh, see, I think as a, a career counselor, uh, it's always very difficult uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, counseling kids who has that art artistic inclination. And I, I say that for a reason. Because aspirations of parents always play a kind of spoil sport in the whole thing, right? Because I mean, can't blame uh, because the monetary thing uh, comes into play, uh, the job security comes into play, the job security of or the, uh, the security of a monthly paycheck comes into play when all this is lacking. It's very natural. It's very natural for all the parents listening also. It's a very natural phenomenon to be scared. And I want to you know, give that first, that it's very natural to be scared. But at the same time, understand the world is changing. Understand, you know, uh, there are a lot more things happening in the world that, uh, you know, they're undergoing a lot of changes. Not only we are, we are faced with unprecedented changes now, uh, both in terms of technology, uh, both in terms of whatever we are facing now with uh, COVID, uh, obviously in the world of art also, a lot of things are metamorph, you know, a lot of things are changing, a lot of things are being born, uh, a lot of new fields are being created. Actually, even with technology, a lot of new fields are being created in the world of art. Uh, see, uh, the, the, the issue here is, I think parents should learn to step back and let the kids pursue what they want to do and not be too worried about that monetary thing. See, what I want to convey here is there are two things here. One is professional satisfaction. Equally important is that personal satisfaction. See, a lot of us miss out on that point. See, to be happy in life, if, if education and uh, uh, occupation is all about happiness, then it should be weighed in both the professional satisfaction as well as the personal satisfaction because you could be earning a lot of money, but if you're not, you know, uh, in the, you know, if you're not personally satisfied in what you're doing, uh, trust me, not only in, uh, it'll reflect somewhere on the job, it'll, it'll, it'll lead to chaos. You, you know, you're not living a full life as to say it's as important as that. So my best advice is, you know, you, you, you need to learn to balance that. And uh, uh, us as a company, Vedatma, how we come into the picture is we do a psychometric assessments. Uh, uh, when I say psychometric assessments, it's very important to understand uh, you know, even when somebody is interested in art, and uh, I think quite a few of the panelists were mentioning, it's too early to decide. See, you can't decide sometimes, okay, I want to get into this particular stream because art in itself or media or entertainment probably comes, you know, as you learn things, as you get exposed to things, probably even in college, Harish was saying this whole music thing got exposed in, uh, in uh, engineering, right? So I think it's, it's not easy for kids to take the decision when they are in 12th standard. So I think what is important is parents to understand that, that not to pressurize them to like, you know, put them in silos. There are no silos in art. There's no silos in entertainment. They'll get exposed to the world and decide, but let them be because ultimately they need to understand, parents need to understand that uh, the personal satisfaction of the students is important. And when things are working out, uh, you know, uh, yesterday we had a very interesting session. 
where uh, Professor Debashish uh, from uh, uh, you know IIT uh, Kurikode, uh, uh, IIT Kurikode said that you know it's the oldest advice in the book, but which is very wrong. Don't follow your passion. <laughs> so we are all very shocked. What is he saying? Don't follow your passion. But here, what he was trying to convey, and I think it's a very important message. Follow your passion, but understand all the other, you know, things that fit into following your passion. Because, you know, passion is just interest, just one component. Interest will keep changing as you get exposed, maybe in college, when you start working. Uh, but, you know, you should have the other aspects also sorted. And this is where psychometrics also come in. I want to tie in that. Uh, like who you are, who are you as a person, you know, are you suited into certain kind of streams that you're getting into? So, you know, in the world of art, uh, I can easily say that most of the art fields doesn't come with a, you know, paycheck, monthly secure paycheck. So are you a risk taking kind of a person? Are you okay with that risk uh, taking? Or if a student is a risk averse person, is that good for the student to get into a field of art? You know, there are these very deeper inner questions that needs to be answered to understand the kind of personality you are, what your personality is, uh, you know, how it is suited to certain kind of careers. And we have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, research that has been done of matching certain personality types uh, to certain careers. And when I say research has been done, I'm talking about internationally and I'm talking about decades of research. So all these things will actually help a student, uh, you know, take that early decision on into what kind of artistic or entertainment or media careers, you know, because it's, it's a big, it's a big uh, uh, world out there when it comes to a lot of specialization and it's not easy. See, it's very easy choosing probably engineering and being a doctor, but when it comes to the world of art and entertainment and media, it's big. And these kind of choices has to be done understanding what you want to achieve in life, understanding who you are, how you are suited to certain careers, and all this can, you know, psychometric assessments can help in this. That is what I really wanted to convey. And also just want to stop, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, end this uh, uh, point by saying that the, the, the focus on education, you know, students cannot choose sometimes after 12. So I think liberal arts education, is something that should be focused on now. Uh, and I think I'm glad that a lot of private universities are actually cropping up, uh, starting with Ashoka, Azim Premji, uh, you know, uh, there were the, you know, traditionally we had your NIDs, a NIFT, you had a lot of architectural colleges, you had uh, for economics, you had obviously the prestigious Stevens colleges and presidency, all that, but newer liberal arts specialized colleges are cropping up your Flame University, Ashoka University, where you don't need to choose. You don't need to get into that silos. You can actually, you know, weigh in your options being in the first degree, I mean, first year of college and still have those options going. And I think liberal arts will really help as, as it's picking up in this country. A lot more colleges are coming up and the awareness of that is coming up. And I think that is definitely going to uh, help such aspiring students who doesn't want to, you know, go into the older, you know, well-established uh, fields like, you know, engineering or doctorate or, you know, whatever, you know, few careers that is uh, mainstream, but want to get into these alternate careers. It'll give them time to choose. And I think uh, liberal arts education is something of a boom to this country. Uh, yeah, probably that's, uh, I'll take questions later when it comes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Eldo. That was, uh, again, revealing, I'm sure, yeah. A lot of parents who are listening to this session would actually find that uh, liberal arts education is also an option uh, from your words of wisdom. In fact, your talk was reminding me of that old uh, adage which says some people are very so poor that all they have is money. So if you uh, if you uh, you know kill uh, if you sacrifice your passion uh, for the sake of money, probably that is where pe people may be uh, you know, ending up. So yeah, we'll move to uh, Sanjay, uh, the very famous Sanjay Bobby Dio. A duo, uh, Sanjay. Um, sorry, Sanjay, that we have been keeping you waiting uh, so long. Uh, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. You, yeah, please, sir. You can hear me, right? Yeah, sure. We can. We can. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me, and thank you for the introduction. 
I think I'll just add to that. I, this is a kind of self-introduction without the encomiums, of course. Uh, that will be my prescription, I think. Uh, so uh, I was born into the world of movies. Actually, I was born uh, figuratively and literally into movies because my father was a producer. He is a producer and my uncle, who was my father's brother, uh, was a very busy actor those days, Mr. Jose Prakash. So uh, during uh, my childhood days and teenage days, my father will be producing one movie a year, which meant 365 days of uh, discussions, pre-productions and uh, pre-production work and shooting, post-production release. And it, uh, it was movies all around me. And we will have directors, writers, musicians, actors, uh, all of them coming home for uh, lunches and dinners and uh, Obviously, I was not let into the conversation as I was too young, but naturally I'll be eavesdropping on them. And they had this very uh, enriching talks that it was very easy to get lured to them. And uh, it was a very fertile soil because my mother was a teacher. She insisted that we read a lot and we had a great collection of books at home. And it was a deadly combination of art and literature. It was impossible not to get bitten by the film bug. And fortunately, I was bitten by it uh, very badly. <laughs> so uh, from the time I can remember, I wanted nothing but uh, uh, life in movies. Uh, movies uh, were my passion, if you can use that word. And I was just an average student. Uh, I was not very good at my studies. And I didn't care. Uh, when I opened my textbooks, I always uh, will be meandering into movie posters and movies and gossips and stuff like that. I just wanted my education to get over. I, if I had the choice, I would have quit uh, my education after my 12th, but no, my parents wanted me, me uh, to do my degree, fortunately for me. And uh, reluctantly enough, I joined for my uh, degree. Uh, even then, uh, it was movies. Uh, I didn't focus on my studies at all. And I used to visit my father's uh, shooting locations very frequently. And during my degree days, I, uh, it was such, a, I was on a location and I was having this very enriching talk with uh, the great actor, Mr. Madhubudi Venu. It was a very uh, uh, interesting conversation. And he's like a father figure. So he asked me what my plans were after uh, my studies. And I told him that right after degree, I'm going into movies and I'm going to write. And out of the blue, ask, he asked me, Do you th don't you think it is not a wise decision? Don't you think you should be taking your post-graduation? Now, I didn't uh, see that coming. Uh, even a degree was a liability as far as I was concerned. Uh, I just wanted to plunge into movies. And that's when he, someone like him asked me that question. So uh, that kept me thinking because it was Venu Chetan who asked me that. And I surprised myself by... Uh, doing my post-graduation. And when I look back, I realized that if I hadn't done my post-graduation, I wouldn't have been a writer uh, who I am now. I might have churned out movies, but those would have been run-of-the-mill kind of conventional stuff, I'm sure. Because uh, the, for the first time, I was taking my studies very seriously when I was doing my post-graduation. I was introduced to uh, Shakespeare's, Ibsen's, uh, Beckett's, Eliot's, uh, Hugo, uh, Dickens, and uh, everyone. And this was a whole a new uh, experience for me, taking my studies seriously. When I took my studies in literature seriously, that kind of complemented with my passion towards cinema. I, for the first time, realized what art stands for. And I was reading books by these people who, for whom Mart was a vocation. It was like a prayer. And I realized that my priorities were not right. Uh, as Eldo said uh, a couple of minutes back, I was passionate, but my passion wasn't uh, in the right path. And luckily, my post-graduation educated me out of certain priorities I had. And uh, I began to take it very seriously. I began to take cinema very seriously. Uh, I, I realized that art is all about catharsis. It is all about purgation. And even then, even then, I had this cocky confidence that right after my PG, I would be introduced by my father, 
because we had a production house, he'll be waiting for my script and uh, I'll have it on a platter. From that time, I was writing scripts with my brother, who's my co-writer, Bobby. Uh, so uh, after my MA, I finished my postgraduate, I finished my, uh, our first screenplay and presented it to my father. He rejected it. He said, this is bad. Uh, that is uh, a rude shock. I was this lonely genius uh, <laughs> waiting to be discovered. And this was very unkind. And uh, we, we felt very angry towards him. But we didn't give up. We didn't give up in the sense I didn't give up because I didn't have any other choice. I wasn't good at anything else. So uh, I started writing again. And scripts after scripts, he started rejecting them. And to uh, make it worse, he'd be producing other movies with other writers. So uh, he rejected eight of the first scripts. And uh, we had instances where we approached other producers and other actors to see that it, uh, they were interested. They were not, understandably so. They were bad. Uh, so it was our ninth screenplay that uh, my father said yes to. And he produced it. And uh, fortunately for him and fortunately for us, us it was a success. So uh, it was a long journey. I, I thought I uh, will uh, come up with my first movie before I was uh, 24 or 23, like... Uh, I, I had such a I had such a plan, but that didn't work. That is when I realized that anything, any learning in art helps. Like my post graduation helped me. It it will it will uh, show you the right light uh, if you wait for it. And uh, I remember during my post graduation, I read this book called Agony and Ecstasy. It was about Michelangelo. And uh, it said that he would uh, dissect dead bodies, cadavers, to uh, learn about human anatomy so that he can paint and he can do his sculpture. I never knew that. I was there for, till then, I was there for the money and the fame and the glitter and the glory. And I was stripped of the halo by uh, all these rejections which my father uh, Gave me. So uh, luckily, we had that first movie. It was a success. And uh, after that, it, still it's a challenge. Still it's a challenge. But yes, but the journey was tough and at the same time sweet. So uh, what I want to tell the youngsters out there that it is, this is not going to be an easy journey. This is not going to be a short journey you will have to wait for at least a decade to be an overnight success. Uh, so, so be ready for that. Don't sulk. Be ready for that. And uh, those eight screenplays, I don't consider them as my failures. I consider them as attempts. And they say that uh, failures are footsteps. Uh, failure is a footstep to success. And I believe that attempts are the footsteps to success. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you so much. That was very good. Uh, in fact, the way you put it, like uh, you have to hard work at least for a decade to, to be an overnight success. I think uh, that that underlines it all, right? Uh, I believe people will understand what where you're coming from. Yeah. So we move to uh, last but not the least, we move to Mr. Apupan uh, for his thoughts on for his journey, and I'm sure he had had a uh, pretty good tough ride there uh, to reach where he has, or rather. I'm sure the journey is continuing. Mr. Chapu, Mr. Chapu, to you, sir. Hey, are we? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it's been a very happy journey. I've been trying to find uh, what I like to do. Uh, and I, um, thanks to all the sponsors and the lovely introduction and everything. Uh, I had a good... Uh, place to start my uh, my thinking, I think. Uh, we were in the school where Sanjay and Eldo and all went to. Palikudam it's called now. Uh, we had this firebrand lady called Mary Roy who was running the show at the time. And she was pretty much a rebel. And uh, she just, uh, if you observe her, you understood what the importance of dissent was, like what Riaz was talking about. 
and i think it became part of the thinking right from the beginning to challenge anything or to question uh, things and see because uh, most of the christian church was outside our school like protesting one play you know all, uh, all kinds of things and just because mary roy was a woman like uh, um, being authoritative uh, i think a lot of men in uh, uh, cotton especially did not really find it very pleasing so there were all these conflicts that uh, i was i was seeing and any environmental issue uh, any uh, domestic violence issue we had we would have a street play we would be out on the streets doing things so i think we were sort of trained to understand that we don't uh, even though it did uh, look like that at some point that polycodum was an isolated uh, unit uh, i think uh, th there was a lot of the surrounding coming in and uh, i don't know if you remember uh, sanjay uh, would do uh, cid ramdas uh, vj sort of plays in school and uh, we used to watch them and uh, that's the only time when we saw that the sanjay guy he is he's actually like he laughs and all otherwise he looked very serious you know we are like we are way junior we don't know at the time uh, but this idea of uh, you know finding your own path and uh, um following the passion in a in a nice way not like the other way that sanjay was talking about but uh that was already put into us if you just observed what was happening around us so we were very lucky that way like uh, there was a lot of that background in school and then uh, but we are in cotton so we get to hear this uh, whole you have to get a degree and you have to go and do economics because i was a fairly good student not as good as certain other people on the panel like mr eldo purumla but decent student and uh, you know because of baggage from people like eldo we were also told like saint stephens is the best thing and you have to go there and all and i tried and i didn't get in there also but i also tried nid and i didn't get in there so now i know that it's the right way to go and like uh, you know we were given enough how much to like an idea and an ft already thanks ashley also mm. but uh, it brought me to like okay uh, i want to be creative i want to tell my own stories and uh, i was in bombay in st xavier's college uh, i was doing economics uh, but i was trying to find my own thing because economics we were just doing the same thing that we did in school and uh, you know it, it was really not my thing but i had to get a degree as proposed by everybody back home uh, but being in bombay helped a lot and there was a there was a lot of stuff happening all around which you could go and be part of i started painting pubs and uh, um, discos at the time uh, and uh, i found the advertising world which was uh, which had a section called creative so you know if you wanted to be creative uh, there is a section called creative so you can just walk in there and be creative Uh, but i had some really nice people in the advertising at that time this is 2000 or some 2000 uh, who were not um, you know enamored by the glamour of advertising but they told me like hey you uh, you look like you want to be an artist maybe you should leave advertising you know soon and like try to look for it and since then i saw i started thinking about it and i think the main goal has been to uh, preserve my time like uh, take the time for myself uh, i don't want to sit in an office or whatever it might be because it's not going to give me time for myself they're not paying you for like 9 to 5 they're going to pay you for uh, your whole uh, day pretty much so if i want to think and if i want to make something uh, then i i need to save my time and i need to like uh, decide like there, there are only so many things i take in so it was an attempt to focus like that and uh, i i am also like in, i like to escape into my fantasy world so uh, i created this world called hala hala where i started setting up more and more stories and uh, it's an analogy and i think it's much better than advertising to uh, do as, as a thing but it's also my own thing um, we do uh, other commercial work to make it viable like people are talking about uh, this perception that you know the artist uh, is this bearded loser with this jola is gone like you know that doesn't work anymore like uh, artists are sharp people you can see over here uh, there, there are some really sharp people who know what they're doing and you know the parents are don't have to be scared that their son is going to be an artist and like oh my god like it's not like that anymore because uh, uh, in the graphic novel comic scene not many people uh, unless you're like the biggest uh, star or something you're not going to survive on comics alone so it is understood that you have a skill to uh do visual narration which will you understand visual language and visual language is what everybody is talking about now and even my dad can like identify the different little icons and the color changes on his phone now 
that's great visual reading so that comes into all kinds of play right now so you can follow your passion and make comics and tell the kind of stories you want to say because at the time it was the only way i could tell the stories that i wanted to tell uh, if i do it by my own way and like you know uh, hope that it'll get published i was lucky because there aren't too many guys doing comics in the country so like okay like somebody's doing it yeah get him published and all that it was really easy for me at the beginning but now we're trying to like fine tune it it was a nice right um, but i think it's uh, it's about making that balance is a practical scene you cannot be van gogh anymore you can't like cut your ears also nobody is going to like give a shit about it so uh, you know it's it's a it's a balanced thing you have to like do other things to like make this work uh, if you're passionate enough about it you can otherwise you can just do the other stuff and not do comics and you will have a successful life you can do advertising and it'll be great you know uh, that's it yes yeah thank you mr rapu uh, in, in fact i uh, i like to call you as uh, apu more than apu pan uh, yeah so it was uh, uh, it was very uh, you know uh, interesting to listen to you at uh, the way you put it like artists are no more that uh, you know poor looking bearded looking guy who's impoverished guy uh, artists are also care about you know yeah so and i also have felt that there's a perception that every art is quite easy writing films is easy sculpture is easy painting is easy the moment you start to learn it or know it it becomes difficult that's what uh, i understand and the whole uh, discussion from this uh, you know uh, eminent panel is all about that uh, so let us move into the in uh, q and a uh, sessions where i have uh, in fact i think we have shared the i mean this thing with you what we can do is that for paucity of time and for making the discussion interesting we can have the questions one by one to each one of you one round and maybe others can also join that discussion so that it can become you know participative and it can become uh, you know uh, the fact that if i ask a question to mr harish if you or if anyone else wants to support or anyone has a supplementary point to add there you can uh, you can uh, you know feel free to do that 